Hello everybody, good day to you. Welcome back. Glad you guys are here. I know, I'm glad to be here. You guys should remember this uh, Chevrolet Tahoe uh, 5.3 liter uh, from earlier last week. It was here because our customer thought he, he needed a transmission. And uh, we found out that he does not need a transmission. The thing was misfiring and it was not running properly. And therefore, since uh, torque output was reduced, it uh, was not shifting properly at 151,000, uh oh, it's gone. 151,104 miles on the odometer. Uh, you may recall that uh, during that tune-up diagnostic procedure, I found out that the, uh, or one of the complaints was the AC was uh, underperforming. And I recharged it and I threw some dye in there. It's been a couple days, so what I'm gonna do is uh, get the UV black light out and we're gonna take a look around at the system to see if we cannot identify the presence of said dye to uh, determine if this thing has leaked down or not. I'm pretty sure there's a leak somewhere because when I got a hold of it, it had like 0.364 pounds of refrigerant in the system and uh, it requires uh, much, much more than that. I forget the exact amount, but it was extremely low. It was more low than I would have expected from something small like a leaking service port valve. So uh, I kept it here for an extra couple days and now we're gonna go ahead and take a look and see if we cannot see uh, where the leak is at. So stay tuned because this is going to be a very good video. Powering down. Pew! Happening Z hood. Okay, so during the intro break, I had this thing running again, and it's still making cold, which tells me that if there is a leak, it's fairly small. Let us pop an the hood and uh, see if we can't detect uh, the presence of uh, said leak. I have here my ultraviolet black light LED emitter. You know that there? It's not as bright as, you, uh, as it looks on camera, but it's pretty bright. It should show us any presence of the ultraviolet reactive dye. So what we'll do, we'll come over here to the service ports first because there's still some dye left over. Actually, hang on, hang on here. Let's turn the light off, there we go. There's still some dye left over from uh, when I sprayed it off and when we refilled it. You can see a little bit on the cap right there. You can see some on the hose. Let's pull one of the caps off the valves. Yep, see that dye left over? That's what we're looking for, but not here. We know the leak is not centralized here. So what I'll do, we're just gonna follow the line down. I don't see anything down below at the compressor. Yeah, I can see the compressor face from here. I don't know if you guys can see it or if the light reacts on cam. But I'm looking at the compressor. I see the face of it. I see the, uh, the area behind the pulley. Nothing leaking there. Uh, I've got a visual from this angle right here of the uh, the manifold. I see nothing leaking there. That's good. Hmm. So nothing in the obvious locations here. Let's see if there's a, any AC lines on this side. Yeah, there's an AC line down there. Again, nothing reacting to it. Let's take a look at the front at the condenser and see if we can see what we're trying to see. Let's see here. That's a, oh, whoa, there we go. We got a winner. We got a winner. See the green? We get the light back on it. There it is. See that green right there? That's a leaker for sure. Let me get a, uh, a regular light. We'll go in there and take a look and see what that's about. There we go. Regular lumens to the rescue. All right, so we're looking at that area right there. And we can see that there's the uh, receiver dryer slash accumulator, that little tank that runs uh, vertically along the condenser. And you see that little weld right, right there. That is actually the port that goes from the core tank on the condenser into the uh, accumulator receiver dryer. And down here, there's the second port. See that there? Now, I recall these things having an issue with thermal cycling where the little weld in there would crack and cause the leak. And the, the repair is to replace the uh, condensing unit. So, let me go get that thing ordered and uh, we'll go from there, powering down one more time. So, again, okie dokes. The component is ordered. It will uh, it'll be here soon. It's in stock, it's available, it's local. Let's go ahead and start taking this thing apart. 
uh, while we wait for this new one to show up. I'm hoping I can get this thing apart before the uh, the new one arrives, but, uh, but we'll see. Come here. Uh, that one's too big for uh, for those clips. I need a smaller one. Mm, there, there's my smaller one. Try this again. There. Get in those guys. Just pop that clip up. Do it twice, and we repeat. I've got to pull this top cover off of the, uh, the cooling package, and then uh, we can get to the access bolts to the V cooling package and disconnect it and remove it. Now I'm supposed to remove the entire assembly. I uh, I think I can sneak that uh, condenser out without uh, fully disassembling everything. I'm trying to save some money by avoiding replacing engine coolant, but uh, we'll see. Maybe I have to do it the hard way. Maybe I can uh, maybe I can cheat just a wee little bit. Let's get all this stuff out of here. Another. There's like ten thousand clips in here. Clip. There you go. Hmm. Where's the next one? This next set up top. Okay, panel is unclipped. Let's pull this thing aside and look at that. We have like no more access to anything than we did before. That's awesome. Modern engineering. Yeah, this is gonna be interesting. I have to take more apart than I than I thought. I have not uh, replaced one of these condensers since I was at the dealership. They had a very high failure rate. I'm surprised this one lasted so long in the wild. So I think first things first is I'm going to have to pull this intake tubing off of the engine because I'm going to need to unbolt the cooling package from its core support and I'll have to lean it back to uh, gain some access to the fasteners for the condenser. All right, moving back some, we can see there's a 113 mil bolt right here holding on to the, uh, the radiator and there's another one on the other side. So let's pull these guys out next and uh, that's going to allow us to lean the cooling package back. Come here. Next. The trouble is, is this condenser, I believe, bolts onto the radiator from the front side of it, and we can't get to the front side of it. It's a highly labor-intensive operation. Uh, I also think I need to remove this air box right here. There we go. Because it's in the way, and I won't be able to get the... Uh, that's not okay, look at that. The screws are destroyed on this air box. All right. Anyway, as I was saying, I won't be able to lean this cooling package back with this air box in the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this thing out of here. If I can get it to come out. Oh, it's got uh, rubber grommets that secure it to the body. There we go. Pop this thing out. I'll have to fix that, uh, that other stuff later. It's not okay. Yeah, yeah, she's in there, yep. Let me go ahead and pull this thing out now. Two hands, gotta use two hands. Alrighty, now we have like a little bit of access to what's going on here. The cooling package is kind of loose. So what I need to do uh, is actually go fetch the machine. We need to recover the refrigerant back out of this thing. Uh, otherwise I won't be able to disconnect it. Uh, we're also going to have to disconnect the uh, transmission lines from the uh, condenser because the condenser also has an integrated transmission cooler it's a thing that they do it's a uh, take one part or two parts and condense it down into one part uh, no pun intended on the condensing uh, anyway <laughs> let's uh dad jokes let's go ahead and get this thing connected and powered on and it will recover the refrigerant and then we can go back to uh, some disassembly action i'm running out of uh, extension cord things here on my multi-socket extension cubes there we go. Power this thing on. Come here. Swing those guys around. We'll reconnect these one more time, recover, and then I can uh, continue working while the machine's doing its deed. There we go. I hear the refrigerant flowing. Right. See you, buddy. Have a good day. Afternoon, evening, weekend. One of those. All right, machine, begin recovering now. That's also gonna let us know how much 
has leaked out over the past few days. Connect both hoses, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so, got a condenser line right down here. So the fitting right, or transmission line, I should say. That's the transmission line, that's one of them. And the other one is on this side over here. Those are gonna be fairly easy to remove. I've got a bolt and an AC line way down down here. I can actually get to that by reaching around. We can disconnect the AC line right here. No, no, that's trans. Uh, where's that other AC line at? Maybe they're on this side. I really don't remember. Anyway, I'll find them. They're in there somewhere. We need to take this plastic shroud apart. That just clips onto the top of the radiator. No, I cannot remove this, uh, this upper radiator support right here. It does not come off. Uh, very unfortunate. It would have been very a very easy job if they just made this thing bolt on, like right here and right here, but this is one solid ginormous piece bolted down to the frame, so I can't remove it. Not even gonna try. I've already been down that road. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna slide this guy back. I'm gonna pick the cooling package up just ever so slightly and pull it out of its lower mounts. So now I can get some access to this plastic shroud piece and we can disconnect that. It's just held on with little clips. So a slight amount of upward pressure. Come here. Really, you're gonna make a liar out of me? Why? Screwdriver. Fry driver for eye screwing device here. Come out, shroud. There we go. Okay, shroud is loose. I can't pull it out that way, it doesn't fit, so it needs to come forward, and then I have to turn it. There's also clips on either end of it that secure it to the, uh, the rest of the shroud. Shroud gravity, I dropped it. No worries. And then we can just kind of slip this guy out right through here. There we go. This has got to go back on later, so I'm going to put it right up here so I don't forget it. Now I can see the front of the condenser. I can see all my plastic shrouds. We can work around that later. Let's go ahead and uh, get the transmission lines disconnected, I think. Okay, I need to go ahead and pull this tray out right here because I need to reach under it. The, uh, the lines for the condenser are underneath the frame rail thing right here. So it'll be easier to reach if this thing is... No longer present. Let's just pull this guy out. Should be four, yeah, just four bolts. There we go. Pull that thing out. Yeah, and I still can't see it. Never mind, there's a. I don't remember that. Anyway, the lines are right here. We'll get to those later. Okay, so while, uh, while that machine's recovering, the refrigerant. Let's pop the power steering lines off. We're just gonna get behind the little clips. I said power steering, transmission lines off. We're gonna get behind the clips, pull the little clips out. The, there is a release tool for these, but I like to just take the clip out. It's just my way. Okie dokes. Now that that clip is out, I'm gonna gently just get a hold of this, kind of pry on it, pop it out, and we can set that aside one of the trans cooler lines, not power steering. Okay, we have moved over to the driver's side and that's where the other transmission, not power steering line is located. So I will remove this one in the same fashion. We'll just get behind that little clip without stabbing my finger. That would hurt. I love getting injured at the beginning of a tight job. That's always fun. Let's pull that out. There we go, clip number two. Same protocol. Go in there with the pliers and just kind of encourage that to come out. We've got our fluid spillage going on right there. No matter, it's gonna happen. Okay, we now need to go all the way back to the passenger side again. That's what I was trying to re- Oh, you can't see there's a hose in the way. Hang on, hang on here, I'm trying. It's hard to see. So, right, uh, right here, we still can't see. Shiza, hang on, let's try over here. Mm, uh, nope, not working. It's not working. There it is. Now you can see. 
that little stud right there on that manifold. I need to get that 13 millimeter bolt off. That's the manifold that goes to the condenser. So I've got, I've got the bolt on it, or the socket on the bolt rather. I need to reach in and uh, get a hold of that guy. This is this is the part that's hard. One of them. And I'm just gonna ratchet that 13 mil nut off of the stud, and that's gonna disconnect the AC manifold from the condenser itself. And once that's removed, still can't see, there we go. Once I get that thing off, we can unbolt and unclip the condenser and then sneak it out. Go ahead and pull this off. Not, not very fun. Okay, it's loose as it's gonna get with the tool. Now I must uh, reach way down in there, pull that guy off, there we go. I am a contortionist. Okay, and then I can grab a hold of that line and wiggle the line loose. It's under a vacuum from the machine, <clears throat> come out, and I can't reach it from the other side because that silly little plate thing is there. Wiggle, wiggle. There we go. Okay, that's off. And then the bottom line, that one pops out. Okay, so the AC system is now disconnected from the condenser, or the condenser is disconnected from the AC, however you want to look at it. So now, we have a bracket down there. Let's get some light on the subject. See that 10 mil bolt? way down there on that little side bracket thing. There it is. I need to go in there and then disconnect that bolt. That bolt holds a bracket and that bracket holds the condenser lines to the radiator. So I need to get that thing out next. Now that feat will be accomplished with a little stubby ratchet and some more contorting of the wrist. I need to slip myself down inside of here and get a hold of that fastener and just kind of work that thing loose until it comes out. Moving along, once that thing is off, we're almost entirely disconnected. We're getting there. There it is. Pull that guy out. And then I need to reach back in and I'm going to remove that little bracket if I can get it to come off of the lines. It makes it easier to uh, to sneak this assembly out through this little hole right here if that bracket is off which i don't know if i can get it and i can get it off on the silverados but i don't know about the tahoes here hmm maybe not it's it's pretty stuck well i can always oh you know what this wiring harness is in the way that's the deal move that aside i rotate it come here come on this whole truck's making a liar out of me. There we go, got it. That was violent. I, and I dropped it. Yeah, there's our little bracket right there. Okay, so again, looking down through these little holes, we can see there's a tab on the condenser and then this little clip right here on the radiator. We have to depress that clip and then pull the condenser up to uh, slide it off of that uh, off the clip and then I'll do the same thing on the other side. So let's figure out how I'm going to achieve this from here. All right, reaching in with my little uh, trim tool pry thing here. I'm going to give that a pry and then I'm going to pull up on the condenser and we're going to slip it out of that uh, little bracket right there. See that? See how it comes out? Now the key is going to be keeping it out while I do the same thing over here on the uh, driver's side. And if I can get them both to come out, then I can maneuver the thing out and uh, we can prep it for the new one to go in. All right, going back in with the trim tool again. Loud noisy, not from me. And we're gonna push that tab back, pull up on the unit. There we go, it's, it's sort of free-ish. Now I need to pull it up a little bit more. Right, let's get you guys out of here. Okay, need to pull it up a little bit more. And it is free. 
mostly, except for some trim pieces here. Hang on. Lots of maneuvering and wiggle action. Come out, please. Oh, I've got to pull those side trim panels off also. That's uh, I forgot about those. Hang on here. They, they kind of just snap on. Let me get in that hole. There we go. That one's loose. One more on the other side. All right, so I've got the condenser free of the radiator. Now we need to turn it, angle it, wiggle it, and then make space for that uh, angled hose assembly that was on the other side. So you guys are gonna stay there while I kind of fiddle with this thing. This is not really a conducive uh, atmosphere for, for filming. Come out. All the way out, come on with it. Almost got her. Here she comes. Beautiful. Out. Okay, now for all the naysayers that say I just ruined this radiator, it's fine. There's no damage to it. We didn't scrape or scratch or damage or destroy anything. No problem there. Over here in our condenser, now that it's out and in the light, you see that hue of uh, liquid right here and right here? That right there is where the leak occurs. Right there at that little welded seam thing. This one down here doesn't do it. It only seems to do it on this top one right here. Very strange. Oh, another cool fun fact about these things. So we have a, a transmission cooler here, and then this section down here is the condenser. Look what they did in order to separate, uh, I guess there was like an issue with these things where they, this used to be one tank and it's capped off on the insides. And with the thing being connected, it was getting some kind of a heat transfer problem. And it was, I think it was heat soaking the condenser through the uh, transmission cooler through this little pipe right here. So what they did is they went in and just took a saw and cut that pipe. Um, I actually have a video when I, uh, back in the day when I didn't know about them cutting that as a factory issue, and I found some of these brand new out of the box. They look like they were cut up with like a chop saw. I'll go ahead and put the, a link to that video down in this video's description. You guys have got to see that. It, it's, it's insane what kind of brand new parts we're rolling off the assembly line. When the new one shows up, I'm gonna check it and see if they cut it with a saw or if the, uh, if the aftermarket has changed its design any to improve what's going on here. But we can see this is that's transmission side right here and then this part down here below that is the condenser again like i said two parts reduced down to one part number hey 1-800 radiator not sponsored has arrived they brought me a condensing unit and some candy Girl. takes candy leaves parts Ooh, smarties also not sponsored all right let's get this thing busted open and we're gonna inspect it for uh, that GM flaw that's inherent in the design. Let's see if the aftermarket has fixed that or not. Um, no, I did not buy a Delco part because the Delco condenser is like $700 and this one is not, so we're going with this one. Plus the Delco part has the flaw in it, so why would we put a, a flawed part, or replace a flawed part with another flawed part? That's just silly. It's not, uh, not a smart maneuver. Come out, box. Maybe if I uh, straddle it some, there we go. Got it. Let's see what they do. Oh, hang on. Look at that, see? The aftermarket doesn't take theirs and cut it in half with a chop saw. Good job, guys. All right, let's uh, unzip tie all this stuff right here. Get rid of that. Goodbye. Another. Goodbye. You hear me? Stop it. There. Get rid of that. That's our stud that goes in there. We're gonna need that later. This is actually more clearly defined than the factory unit also. See the larger fins here for the trans cooler? And then the smaller ones, and we can even see where the spot welds are, where they welded in at the, uh, the little uh, block off plates inside of these tubes right here. And they seem to have improved the, uh, the method in which 
the receiver dryer attaches to the core. Oh, we're still stuck. Start becoming unstucker. Yeah, look, look how beefy that is right there. Compared to the not beefiness of this one over here. Yep. See that? That one is small. This one is large. That one has a hole chopped in it. Yeah, right there. This one does not. Good job, 1-800 Radiator. Not sponsored. Okay, so now what I need to do is remove these little pieces of shroud right here. Again, they just kind of clip on. We'll slide these guys off, slide them on to the new unit, and then uh, we get this thing maneuvered down in front of the radiator and then bolted back together. So, yep, see how they just kind of pop on and off? Take this one, slip it on over, slide it on, it just kind of hangs out right there. And repeat on the, uh, the other side. This one, around that little manifold block. Can you, oh, you guys can't even see what I'm doing. That one goes around the little manifold thing. And now we can discard that old unit. New one. Slide that thing wrong way. Just like so. Then around the tank, clip it on. Now we're ready to go back into the vehicle. Moving back up. Here, let's see if this thing is uh, holding air or not. All right. That's how you know it's good. It's like Tupperware. There we go. Get rid of those, don't need them. All right, condenser coming back in. This is gonna require a little bit more grace just because I don't want to scratch it and damage the fins and all that stuff. Just gonna slide her on down. Pushing the radiator back, and I need to contend with that uh, little angled hose piece. That's, that's really the only problem here is that piece. But it's in, we're good. Mostly. What are you stuck on? Oh, AC line, hang on, that's in the way. There, now it's not. A little too far this way back up, slide it over. A bunch of dirt in there. Dirt in the radiator. No worries, I'll hose that out later. So, condenser's in. We can pick it up and slip it into its little brackets and then we can reverse procedure and get this thing uh, bolted down. Those brackets are slipped in. Let's see, these ones down here. I know the visual uh, Stimulation on this particular job is kind of terrible. It's close quarters combat. So we've got, uh, you guys see, yep. There's the notch and the little bracket thing, the little clip. Slide that down, that's in place. And repeat over here on this other side. Just gonna go ahead and push it down. Come on, all the way down. Get in there. Uh, it's close. Close, but no cigar. I need to align the little plastic shroud thing a little better. Hang on. That one's not straight, and this one's not as straight as it could be. There we go. Now it's in. And give it a push. Right there. Good. No, not good. It didn't seat all the way. One more, one more good push here. Good. Down in there. I think that's it. Yeah, right there. Okay, now that that unit's fully seated, let's go ahead and plug in our transmission cooler lines. Get that stuff reconnected. Uh, that's gonna be fun. Get in there and fit. Come on, you. Raw. Why? So getting this ends is gonna be a little bit harder than taking it out because the clip is still in it. But I figure if I just give it some wiggles, it'll snap in. I think that was it. Yeah, yeah, that's in position. We'll put our little plastic thing back over and then uh, we can go over here to the driver's side and repeat with that line. 
After that, we can put the top shroud back in and then bolt the unit back uh, to the radiator core support. Let's see, where's that other line at? There you are, I see you down there. Yeah, I know you're thinking this is horrible, but this job's really not that bad. Gravity. Once you realize that this job is terrible and uh, you just must suffer through it. Uh, once, the, once you get over that and stop denying it, it'll be all right. So that, we got a bit of a fitment issue here. It doesn't want to, to line up. So I'm gonna try to uh, see if I can't pry this up just a slight bit to get it to align. Oh, I think it came out of its bracket. No worries. We'll put the line in and set it down in the bracket. Slight fitment issue. Hmm. It is aftermarket, what are you gonna do? There's advantages and disadvantages. I think this video is displayed. It's slightly better built, yet the specs are also slightly off. If I can just push it in. I'm trying to push it with my trim tool. There we go. That worked. That was nice. There's our little plastic guy. Without that plastic thing going on, then that means that the, uh, the metal clip in there has not fully seated and the line is not attached properly. And if it's not attached properly, it'll come off while you're driving and then pump all the trans fluid out of the uh, cooler and then you ruin your transmission. And that would be bad. Okay, upper shroud piece. You're going in next. Forgot how I took this thing out. Mm. Well, regardless of how I took it out, I know how it's gonna go in, just like this. Yeah, bird. Snap that guy in. There's snaps on the sides, and then you guys remember the snaps up here in the top. Begin snapping. And the side little wing snaps. Get that one on. Here we go. And then one more right over here, right down below us. Oh, that one's already in. Good. Okay. Beautiful. So now, I'm going to swing this thing back forward. <laughs> back forward. And get the bolt set up. And tighten her down. That was easy. Nice. I love it when things become easy. Easier than they should be. Now I still gotta connect the, uh, the AC line down at the bottom. I'll get to that in a moment. Actually, no, 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 I need to leave this out so I can put the uh, that little bracket guy back on. Oh no, I almost forgot that. That's actually necessary, we need to have that thing. So we're gonna snap you in like that and hook it down that's how it goes okay hope you guys can see i never mind i know you can't see it's ridiculous what we're talking about 100 percent ridiculous here i'll tell you what this is going to take two hands to get this lined up let me set you guys down like over here and uh i'll be back for you in a minute there we go. Yeah, you guys just hang out right there. Let's see if I can't get this thing in. Uh, it snaps like that's the screw side. So we hook in, go that way. Okay. I remember. I think this is like the hardest part is this little bracket. Definitely the hard part. It's on, make sure it's on at the bottom because it kind of hooks and rocks into both of those lines and it needs to, it needs to connect to both of them. Otherwise the bolt doesn't line up. I think that's it. Okay, here's the 10 mil. I'm not ready for that because it's not lined up. Oh, you have gotta do it again. Hang on, unsnapping, unconnecting, undoing everything I just did. Cause I love my job. I'll do it twice. 
There. Now I can get that 10 mil in there. Get that guy started. Ratchet coming in. Tighten that one down. Yeah, there's the 10, and then there's going to be the 13 for the manifold lines that connect the uh, compressor to the condenser. Come on, get tight. We're running out of space. Close quarters combat. A little more. And it's getting tight. Here we go, I feel it. There's my finger click. Got her. We need some 13 millimeter action on the two studs. Kicks. Another one right over here. Okay. So the cooling package has now been re-secured. The only thing we really lack is the uh, the hose down here and then we can uh, evacuate the system. Now this hose is actually two hoses. One of them, that one plugs in right there at the bottom. And then the second one, you didn't see that. Second one, the first hose sits right here and then it bolts onto the, the manifold, the block. There. You guys will never forgive me if I don't put new, new seals on this. The uh, condenser did not come with any but I happen to have the AC master kit, which will come with new, new seals. So let's see here, AC master kit, where are my seals? It's in here. No. No, 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 no. I guess my master kit's not very masterful. Yes, there they are. That's what I'm looking for. I need this one, that's the little guy, and then I need this one, that's the medium one. There we go. Boom the bar. See that? Move through the matrix. That was cool. Watch out, shit's in the sky in a dark night. Got him. Okay, now we put the those new seals over the line nipples right there and the little one right there swinging back around and we can plug these guys back in to the manifold on the condenser see that right down there and this one is going to slide over there we go okay so in the past 20 minutes i've already lost the stud that came with the uh new condenser I'm just gonna use the one out of the old condenser. So I just need to get this little stud down in there, thread that thing in, and then we'll get the nut on. And as soon as I get that nut tightened down, we can uh, get the AC system recharged. And uh, this thing should be almost good to go. Like we're getting close. Okay, that stud's bottomed out. I think my nut, I left it. Uh, nope. Nope. There it is. I knew it was up there. There's the nut. Let me reach down and get myself carpal tunnel syndrome here. Get this thing on. Spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning. And I'll finish that off with the 13. Socket click. And on. There we go. Alright, reaching in again. I just need to get a little bit of torque on that 13 nut and then we'll go ahead and uh get the rest of this uh minor stuff put back together um i was looking at that air box and i uh i actually can't do anything to repair that air box i'll show you in a second let's start the uh oh look at that recovered 1.883 pounds of refrigerant that is less than what goes in it vacuum blah 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 in fact what did go in this where's the spec spec thing at. Oh, there's, that was the sticker. Oh, no, 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 no. There's the sticker. Oh, 0.92 kilograms. So 0.92 times 2.2 2 
That's 1.8. Actually, that was pretty close. It was actually very close. Anyway, back to uh, back to this airbox business. I can't do anything about repairing that with uh, with another screw because they've actually broken away the top of the lid here. So the only option that I really have is to just toss some zip ties on that and uh, use those to secure the thing. Uh, the actual repair would require the replacement of the lid. But I don't have another lid, but I do have zip ties, so I'll just use some of those to uh, secure that thing a little bit better. We're gonna have to use the white ones. I don't wanna sacrifice black zip ties because these are gonna be uh, removed at some point. So I'll just zip tie it with the high vis zip ties. That way we know. Question is, do I have the single-handed skills to operate a zip tie with one arm? No! It's like a new new challenge around here. One-handed zip ties. Come on. You can do it. You can do it, Ray. Yeah, look at that. One-handed zip tie. See, that's how I, I developed those skills. I just decided to see if it was possible. And then when I found out it was possible, I just kept doing it. Because the reality is, is I was uh, so right-handed, like as a child, that I could do almost nothing left-handed. And it bothered me, so I started trying to do lots of different things left-handed. And now, I have left-handed skills, kind of. I can't write with my left hand or anything like that, but, uh, so I tried. But I can do other things. I can definitely do other things. Like operate pliers and zip ties. Snap. I like it when you cut a zip tie off and then it kind of flies off like a rocket. That's kind of cool to me. Yes, I really am like, still six years old in my head. Oh, look, there's the stud that I couldn't find. Save that for later. Okay, so all I need to do now is just get this air box in position here. It's got little uh, rubber grommets that fit in two holes. Oh, I'm ahead of myself. I can't believe it. I forgot the panel that I removed. So terrible. I'm not. It's end of day. It's like 6.30. I'm here late to get this thing done. I, I've, I've lost my ability to think properly and clearly. Hey, now we can see the grommets. There they are. Four bolts. Some grommets. Put that one in there. That one. Another. Okay, now, now we're in a position to put this airbox thing back in. We'll slip it in past all the uh, the hoses. Now I just need to line up those grommets down there. Can you guys see them? I can't. Now, despite how much I feel like I was going to show off, there's no way I'm going to get all that lined up with one arm, which is not not doable. I'm aware of my my limitations for the most part, I think. That's lined up. That one's lined up. I'm feeling them go in. There we go. Good. Now I can connect my mass airflow connector. That's the mass airflow and intake air temperature sensor all in one component. I guess that's the new GM thing. Hybrid many parts into like one part saves on the parts count. Says I. Says GM. Says modern manufacturing. So that stuff goes over there. Now, 360. We can get our uh, intake plumbing reinstalled. This I can do one-handed. It's gonna be great. Plug in the tube right there. Plug in the throttle body right here. Good. Snap that in, good. Snap that in. Click, good. And tighten the clamps, and then I've just got this cover, a recharge, and we're good to go. What are you looking at? None. None? None? So hey, if you're gonna hang out over here, um, why don't you uh, grab that piece of plastic on the floor in front of you, and then come over here and put it on this, uh, on this Tejo. I could do that. You see how it goes? Yep. How's it go? Like this. Like like this? Like this. Really? 
Nope. Uh, nope. I think you're a little off on that one, sweetheart. Hold on, I got it. You can do it. There's some clips around here for it somewhere, too. Like this. Like this? You getting it? I think so. I think you can do it. I think. I know I can. With my encouragement and guidance, I know I'm sure I can. you can. You can't do it. think it, you gotta do well, it. Well, you're close. You're kind um, of... The clips are, oh, they're in that red thing right there. That's, that's where they are. Okay. One more, uh, one you more hose clamp. Get my fingers dirty. Yes, use your hands, put them. Again, that's not right. Something's not looking right here. There. Oh, that wasn't right. It was there. Doing six things with once, at once with one hand. I'm using her Does hands. Doesn't matter which. Those are actually two piece uh, pins. Look, let me show you. Is the bottom side of the pin. So you put that in, and then this is the other half. Oh. It just happens to not be connected. Got it. You can just push that one down in there. Okay. There you go. Now, most of them are there just set up, not taken apart. There. Yeah, do that. And we're almost done vacuuming. Two minutes and 42 seconds to go. That's plenty of time for me to get my, my driver out of there and my impact out of there and my flashlight out of there. Then we can recharge this thing and uh, then I can go home. Okay, got the tool tray out of there. Those bolts are not for this car. That's for some other stuff that he's throwing away, but I don't throw away fasteners. Uh, vacuum is complete. We're holding a good vacuum. This is good. Let's go ahead and recharge this thing. Make sure it comes back to life. Charge. Now the sticker is in... Uh, no, it's not. The sticker is in kilograms, so we need to charge this in kilos. I believe it was uh, 0.92... Oh. There it is. Yeah, 0 0.92 kilograms. It's 920 grams. Metric math. So let's we'll switch that to metric kilograms. 0, 0, 0.092. Begin charging now. You hear me? <laughs> it's charging. And as soon as that thing is done, we can restart the engine. In the meantime, I'm going to spray off uh, all of the, uh, the transmission fluid that has leaked out but I need more spray. I'm running low on the spray. I need to get more. I'll use the green can. The green cans tend to have a little more water in them than the red cans. Some of the red cans have absolutely no water in them and those are fantastical. Just give that a quick spray down right here. I'm not getting all of it because I'm gonna hit it with the garden hose when I pull it outside. Make sure it's all staying nice and shiny. But this will help to break up the petroleum product and uh, get rid of it. Oh, I forgot. Terrible. I told you at the end of the day, I'm trying to get out of here. Close that down. Good. Very good. Okay. That goes over there. We're done with you for now. And the machine is still machining. Almost. Almost. Okay, an undisclosed amount of time has passed, and this thing is still charging. It's almost there. It's close, but no cigar. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. I'm getting annoyed. Still is not fully taking the charge. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fire up the system, let it pull and circulate some of the refrigerant, and then it's not gonna take any refrigerant uh, while it's running because the high side pressure is gonna come up but it should circulate some of the uh, some of the refrigerant and then help the machine pump the rest of it in. Give it a couple minutes here. It's on. It's making cool. Power it down. Maybe now it will accept it. If it slows too far, I'll have to switch it over to a low side charge. Yep, see it's building some pressure now. Okay, waiting, 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 getting annoyed with waiting. Ah, it's still taking all day. Come on, machine. I wonder if the tank's getting low again. Oh, getting closer. 0 0.906 kilograms. Almost there. Finally, it is done. It wants me to close my valves, disconnect the system. That took like 45 minutes, not even kidding. Very annoying-ish. Anyway, let's get these guys off. Disconnect these now. Those go there. 
throw our caps back on. We cannot leave them here. That would be embarrassing. High side cap and low side cap right here. Good to go. Let's lose our drop light and get this thing out of here. Come on out, drop light. We no longer need you. There we go. Hang that over here for now. Beautiful. All righty. Let's fire this thing up. Get the system cycling. Get it operating. Make it cold in here. We're going to back this thing out. Hose it down a little bit. And then we are good to go. So, that being said, I'm going to go ahead and begin closing this video out right now. And I will do this the same way that I always do this. By thanking each and every one of you for watching this video. As always, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please let me know about it by tapping the like button down below. Drop me a comment or two while you're down there. And more importantly, above all else, do not forget to have yourselves a great day. See you guys later. End of Chevrolet. End of transmission. End of AC work. End of video. Over and out. Goodbye, dirt. Goodbye, dust. Goodbye, sand. Hello, squeaky belt. Goodbye, transmission fluid, spillage, and overflow. Get in there real nice light. Whoa! Hold me down. Wash me down. Don't quit my day job. How can I quit my day job? You guys should freak out. Ah, oh, speedy belt. Goodbye, Chevrolet. See you later.